Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Anna the Archer Let's Play Calamity on Revengeance. We're in our base. We've come back from the desert. We finally have our double jump and our Hermes boots. So we are prepared to do some really cool stuff today. So to start things off, I wanted to sell just some of the items that I don't need. I don't like to hold too much in my treasure chest. So you can get a lot of gold. Like we're getting... We had four gold initially, so we almost got 10 gold there just from selling some of the junk we don't need and we can't use in this playthrough anyways. So another thing I wanna do is I want to craft unlimited arrows. So let's go ahead and buy four stacks of arrows. You can normally craft the unlimited quiver in the hard mode with the crystal ball, I think. But with Louis AFK, you can do it sooner, so Let's just show that right here. So this is unlimited wooden arrows and it requires 3,996 on a workbench. So we can go ahead and craft that right now and that will just make things easier for us. Unlimited arrows, favorite that and toss arrows for the rest of the game. So that's just a nice quality of life thing. Don't have to worry about ammo anymore. Actually, I don't wanna to toss those cause I'll be using those to make jester arrows. So let's go ahead and buy some bombs as well before we head out. Just buy a stack of those. And another thing is Louis AFK, I think as well, makes bombs stack above 99. And I don't think we really need rope anymore or an umbrella, so we can put those away in our treasure. And I've sorted my inventory from last time, so it's all cleaned up and good to go. Another thing I wanted to do is fill these bottles with water because one of the things we desperately need is more defense. So you can craft really easily. We've been collecting day blooms as we've gone and you can craft these iron skin potions with water, day bloom, and iron. So put all these bottles in the inventory. And I'm just gonna go ahead and build as many as I can so that we can just constantly be spamming iron skin whenever we need it. So now we can use our gravitation potion and start exploring what we've got above our base and to the sides and see if we can find some good items and accessories. And I'll use a night owl potion. That should help us see a little bit better up there. And here we go. So we got the gravitation going and we're off. So this looks like it's just a tin planetoid. So let's press on the other direction. Do vein miner there. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Get a ton of iron, heal up, and we can press on before we run out of this potion. This world's a lead world, and this island has iron in it. And do a little vein miner on it. Get all this tungsten. That is such a cool sound when it does a huge mine like that. Honestly, that's enough probably to craft tungsten armor. Ooh, this one looks like a good one. So what do we have in here? Looks like a little core. I don't even know what that material is. And some stone slabs. This is awesome. Looks like a Pokemon ball. <laughs> Ooh. So we've got some bottles, some healing potions, mana potions, and a heavy workbench. Whoa, and a whole garden starter pack. Herb bags, blink root, all the different plants. That is great. So we can build, maybe even between episodes, I'll go ahead and, oh, is that a light switch? To turn on a light? That's so cool. So between episodes, I'll build a little garden so we can start crafting more potions. Wow, there's lots of <laughs> Queen Bee Islands up here. It's nice though, because Queen Bee can be a tough thing to spawn. And... <laughs> That's a good way to avoid fall damage. Looks like there's a heart crystal right in the center, which is very nice because we are still missing about eight hearts. Oh, and there's even diamonds. Grab that silver, hide in here. Okay, what do we got? Perfect, an angry lucky horseshoe. So what can we replace? I think this arcane trinket of chi is not really that good. So let's switch that out for the horseshoe. 
Okay, so I just pressed the button and it adds this ore to the white list. So that means that if I use vein miner on it, it should mine it all up. I'm also going to grab some cloud. I don't really want to mine the whole cloud, so I'll just throw a couple bombs down. Cloud's actually a really good resource. Oh no! Okay. So let's check out what cloud blocks do. Cloud blocks can create this aerospec armor. So that's what I'm talking about. It requires cloud blocks and these aerolite bars require the sky blocks, I think. So that's why I picked those up. I might be wrong about that, but I think I think I'll need those later. So this guy actually sells, if you go to his second shop, he sells wood so you don't have it's really cheap so i just bought with like one gold piece i bought 999 wood and that saves me some time Ooh, he even sells pumpkin oh that's really nice we can build pumpkin pie with that one thing i just remembered is you can make infinite of any arrow you want in louis afk with all the ice blocks that we mined earlier i'm just making a ton of ice torches and then we're converting all of these arrows i just bought from the merchant into ice arrows so we should be able to craft unlimited torch, which takes 396. It seems like the the normal requirement is to have four full stacks of something before you can craft the unlimited version of it. So we got the unlimited torch. We'll favorite that. Now we don't ever have to worry about torches. And we can craft the unlimited frostburn arrow. A lot of bows in the game require normal arrows to have the full effect. So I'm gonna keep that, but for now, we're gonna just have it automatically do Frostburn all the time. Ooh, is that a boss that's wanting to fight? <laughs> Uh-oh, I think that might be a boss and I am not ready. Let's build a quick arena if we can. Uh-oh, I think that was the Eye of Cthulhu. <laughs> that's not good. This is, this is gonna be rough. Let's cap this off. And let's put some torches down. Yeah, this is not gonna be good. I don't think I'm ready for Eye of Cthulhu just yet. At least we got the ice arrows ready before Eye of Cthulhu spawned. So having two layers, this should help with the dodging. But I think he's gonna spawn before I can make a adequate arena. Okay, so I'm gonna pop my buffs and let's see what we can do. No, that's not a good start. I didn't even see that zombie there. Okay, so what we'll do is we will just jump over him like that and keep kiting. And I just need to keep an eye out. Oh yeah, this is Revengeance. He switches to his next form really early on. And so he just starts charging like crazy the whole fight. Getting stun locked. No! Okay, we don't have nearly long enough arena. This is gonna be tough. We're doing pretty good damage on him. I just need a, a better arena here. Honestly, I'm tanking him a, a bit better than I was expecting. Okay, we're 24 seconds. This might be the end here. If only I had prepared an arena earlier. Okay, so we really need to get him charging vertically, like this. I remember if, if you just keep running, he'll go too horizontally. But if you jump, he'll go vertically up and down, which will make his dashes a little bit less of a challenge. I didn't think we would win that, but we got him down to 40% and that was honestly extremely sloppy and unprepared. So we should be able to beat him without too much of an issue once we get a couple gear upgrades. Oh, I forgot to mention, we can craft the summoning item for the boss, which is sand blocks, cactus, and this 
mandible right there. So let's craft a few of those so we'll be able to fight the boss. So let's get both of those in our inventory and head over to the desert. Just finished building an arena in the desert and we set our spawn point right there. So I think we're ready to fight the desert scourge. So I'm just gonna throw a couple torches down and start this fight up. Oh, first, before I do that, I'm gonna switch some jester arrows on because those are gonna be the arrows that'll pierce this guy. And I'm gonna throw on all my buffs. Yeah, this is doing a ton of damage. This is great. And so he shoots some projectiles and hopefully this little wood platform I built can protect us from those a little bit if need be. But our double jump is gonna do just fine. We may have overprepared for this guy, but I don't know if he's got some different forms. Oops. <laughs> okay, I didn't know he could go up that high. This guy you can usually cheese by just kind of hanging out low towards the desert. Ooh, yes, that was such an easy kill. Okay, so that's perfect. Um, the depths of the underground are rumbling. Desert winds are blowing fierce. Okay, let's see what we got in this treasure bag. Um, oh, and another thing is these little lore pieces now apparently add some sort of mechanic to the game. So let me put the auto pause on real quick and we can read through this. Place in your inventory for an increase to defense while in the desert or sunken sea. Okay, that's actually really nice. So let's see what we get in this treasure bag. So here we go. Oh yes, we got a new bow. That is exciting. And we've got plenty of victory shards and coral and seashells. Well, we have another summoning item. So while we've still got our buffs on for the most part, let's go ahead and summon this guy again and get some more kills from him. For some reason it's not letting me summon him. I think, oh, I need to be in the desert. Okay. Here we go then. Yeah, this is, this is definitely a bit overprepared with this arena, but it's nice to be able to clear this guy without getting hurt too much. And if you're struggling beating him, this is definitely kind of the way to go. Bow with jester arrows. Oh, I keep trying to dash. I keep thinking I have the shield of Cthulhu. We definitely need to get that next. There we go. Grab all those hearts, the treasure bag. Get out of that desert storm. And let's see what we get. Sweet. Most ocean enemies become friendly and provide some water breathing. Oh, that's great. What else do we have? This is another item. This increases movement speed by 10%, jump speed by 100%, and all damage by 3%. Wow, these are some really good items. I think that may be better than regeneration. Yeah, the jump speed is great. Okay. Let's see what else we got. I got a little gingerbread cookie. Perfect. Okay, well, this has really been a lucrative trip to the desert. I'm going to remove the spawn point so we can teleport back to our base and use some of this new crafting material that we got. Oh no, do, do we have the Eye of Cthulhu? I haven't even finished crafting. Okay, let's see if we can craft Victide bars and get some new gear before this guy comes. Okay, let's, let's grab the range damage. Okay, so range damage right here. Hopefully we have enough for this. The legs and the breastplate. Okay, we at least have our Victide upgrade right there. And then if we have enough, we can craft the bow. Sea bow, perfect. And it's zealous, it's a nice affix. 
Ooh, we gotta put away our gold. This time, I crafted an arena just in case he did this to us. Okay, pop our first heal. So we need to keep him going vertically. If he gets going horizontally, we will have a really bad time. Oh, we need to... And we're 37 seconds away from our heal. This is not good. Oh no, we're getting so close. Sixteen seconds. No, a hundred health on him. Oh, that was so close. Okay, we really need to grab a few more heart crystals, probably. Oh well, we got the desert scourge killed, and we've got a new upgrade on our items. It was a bit of a rush there at the end, trying to get ready for the boss fight, but we've got this new Victide armor set. That's the helmet, the Victide vis visage. It increases range damage, and the set bonus is. It increases life regen and range damage while submerged in liquid. You have a 10% chance while using this armor to throw a seashell projectile. Slightly reduces breath loss in the abyss. Pretty cool. So that's our best set that we can get before fighting the Eye of Cthulhu. One of the things we really need to put on is a ranger archer potion. That'll increase our damage significantly. So we need to craft one of those next episode and then grab a, maybe a couple heart crystals and then we'll be, I mean, we could probably just use with a ranger potion and get him if we just had a little bit more time to prepare. But we'll definitely kill the Eye of Cthulhu next episode. We've pretty much got him right now. Anyways, that'll wrap it up for today here. I've really enjoyed the episode after struggling so much in the desert last time it's really nice to kill the desert scourge and get a full upgrade to our character next episode we'll definitely be able to kill a few more bosses we'll probably be able to kill the um, slime as well the king slime and grab a few things from him and definitely i have cthulhu and we'll be well on our way to becoming powerful in this calamity revengeance mode playthrough I hope you all are enjoying this video as much as I am enjoying creating it. If you are, be sure to give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And I will catch you all next time. See ya.